Hi, my name is Javier Fernandez Han. I'm currently a senior in high school, and I'm homeschooled. I'm also an inventor. Um, and when I say that I'm homeschooled, that doesn't mean that I just stay at home and do lessons at home only. Actually, I've been taking many classes at a local community college. And at this college, recently I took a class on philosophy. And because I'm an inventor, I always look at things from my point of view as an inventor. And our professor actually asked us to write many essays about how we relate to things relating to philosophy to our, ourself and to our lives. So I always talked about how philosophy was similar to invention. At first, philosophy seemed very different from invention. Because philosophy, uh, the way my professor explained it to us in the first day, is philosophy is the I don't really know of I don't really know. And by that he means that it's not clearly defined. It's not necessarily made to be specifically, um, made to be practical. And if you look at the root words for philosophy, uh, philo and sophia, which is basically the love, of the, uh, the love of wisdom, both words are very ambiguous and difficult to, to define. It's difficult to, to specifically define what is love and what is wisdom. So first, it seemed very different from invention, because invention is similar to engineering. It's very, very specific. Um, but philosophy is more ambiguous. Invention is very specific, though. Uh, an invention, it's basically the science of finding practical solutions to problems that face society, that are faced by society. And in fact, my invention process is so specific that I have developed a design process, and many people use these, these processes when they're in, uh, in, in their design or engineering or invention, and I have this particular design process that I usually take, where I first understand the customer's needs. That's usually most important, because if you do not, do not get that right, you can have problems later on. Then, I generate many different ideas. Once I do that, I select the best ideas, the ones that I think will be the most practical and the most effective. As I learned more about philosophy, I saw there were more connections. Philosophy and invention started to get more and more similar. They had more similarities. I learned that even though philosophy is very broad and is not clearly defined, it does actually have a process. Here's the design process that I use for invention again. And now here is a process that I found philosophers tend to take. After talking to my philosophy professor, I realized that philosophers take a very similar approach when they, when they, uh, when they have, uh, encounter philosoph philosoph uh, philosophic questions, because they are very deliberate about what they do. It's not just random. First, they usually define some sort of problem they're trying to, trying to answer. Then they look at many different viewpoints, and they try not to have too many preconceptions, or really any preconceptions, about what is the right answer, to make sure they're very objective and pick the best answer. Then they look at which of these, which of these potential, potentially, potential answers are the best, using logic to make sure none of these contradict any logical, uh, any logical principles. Very similar to the way when you invent something, you have to make sure that it does not violate any principles of physics. So I found more and more of these connections. As the, as the, as the semester progressed, I started finding specific examples of how they're similar. For example, we looked at two philosophers, Kant and Mill, and they're both debating what is morality, what is moral and what is immoral. And one of the answers was very interesting, and uh, that it particularly stood out to me. It is, uh, Kant said, the action is immoral whose principle cancels and destroys itself when it is made a universal rule. For example, lying. If everyone were to lie, it would cancel out the whole purpose of talking, because communication would be impossible if everyone lied. And so therefore, using this model, lying is immoral. And I thought, this is interesting. I wonder how I can apply this to invention. And I wondered about this for a while. One thing that I really loved about the philosophy class is that it really encouraged me to wonder about things that I usually would not wonder about, things like morality. And I realized, after some more pondering, that this is actually a way of inventing or testing ideas. So I thought, one way of doing this is actually, uh, for example, if I invent something, I can use this model to test how, 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 how it will impact the local environment. So for example, if I invent some sort of water purifier device, for a developing country, and I want to see how it will possibly impact the local environment, I can use this model and say, if I have this water purifier, what will happen if I incorporate this, if I, if I implement this device into a developing country and make it universal? What would happen if everyone had one of these, if they were completely universal? And for example, that brings up questions like, how will it impact the local market? If this is ubiquitous, how will the local economy fare? Will small businesses be 
will they, will they go out of business because uh, this particular product is dominating? Will it actually cause more harm than it actually does good? And so philosophy is fantastic because it encourages you to wonder. And I, saw, I keep finding that there are more and more, uh, more and more connections, and I think that's because I've had the chance to wonder. Because I've, from a young age, I've understood and I've kind of realized that I enjoy inventing. I've done robotics for 10 years now, and I've known this is that inventing and tinkering with things is what I enjoy. I look, I've had a lot of time to wonder about my own invention. And so I have lots of information about invention that I know that's second nature to me. So when I learn about something new, such as philosophy, it's very obvious how these two, these two different uh, subjects inter, inter, uh, intermingle. And I think it's very sad that in this age of wonderment, when we have everything that we could possibly need, it's becoming a little bit more difficult to wonder because we're constantly bombarded by things that are instant. Things like social media, where you can, or Google, where you can instantly get an answer. And many social media encourage very superficial interaction, things like poking, or liking, or thumbs up. Not thinking critically, and, thinking, and certainly not wondering. They don't encourage wondering. So I think I encourage everyone to take a philosophy class if you have the chance. I encourage you to wonder and to think about what things you enjoy doing. From all these wonderings, the direct product of my thinking about my own thinking and wondering about how I invent, uh, for example, when I invent something, often I'll wonder, where did this idea come from? What other things was this based on? What did I see that inspired this? And because of that, I have developed with my father a curriculum for invention, which I call Invent and Innovate. This is a curriculum that has many different techniques for helping people to be inventive. And I'm going to go through a few slides that show some similarities. So philosophers often use metaphors and similes to convey their thoughts, because the thoughts they convey are often very difficult to explain and very, uh, not very concrete. They're usually quite abstract. And so often they use metaphors and similes. And I also use those in invention. Here's a specific example. I have this particular problem that I would like to, to, to uh, tackle. And it's very strange to me. It's having to, use, it's having to move a large container of water. Now, this is very common in developing countries where water is not readily accessible. It's hard to get to, and when someone gets to it, often it's very far away from where they live, so they need to transport it. Now, a lot of people have to spend hours hauling water to their home, and that takes a lot of time away from their education. It can also be damaging to their, their bone structure if they have to carry that much weight. But we've solved a similar problem. I can use a simile and say, this, move, moving this container of water is like moving a brick, moving a big piece of cement, which I have already solved, or at least we have already solved, many ways, and one of which is turning it into a wheel. So how can I now make this, this, uh, this solution, how can I apply the solution, this concept, back to the water? Well, one way is to convert the water container into a wheel. Now, this invention was not designed by me. It's designed by a, a, uh, an architect in South Africa. Uh, but this is a real product, and this is one way that you can use metaphors and similes to, to invent. And this is a direct product of my wondering about how I invent and just having the time to wonder about what I do. Metaphors and similes are very powerful because they shape the way we think about things. Bicycle seats are very uncomfortable because, well, the name kind of gives you a hint, it's called a saddle. When bicycles first came out, people saw them as these kind of skinny, and me these skinny mechanical horses rather than a comfortable chair thing that moves on wheels. As a result, we've called it a saddle, we see it as that, and it looks like a, like a skinny horse saddle. It's very uncomfortable. It's because we see it as a mechanical horse. But some people have said, I see it more as a comfortable seat than moves. And they have, some people have put comfortable chairs on bicycles and come up with something like a recumbent bike. So metaphors and similes really shape the way we think. And this is one example of a direct outcome from just thinking about how I use similes and metaphors and how they relate to what I do as an inventor. So what if we thought about the bicycle seat, or thought of bicycles instead as a rocket ship with wheels or as a hang glider with wheels? What types of chairs would we get then? This invention cr uh, curriculum, which I call Invent to Innovate, is, being, is currently, I'm currently implement, implementing it in a local school at uh, Carl Vinci Senior High School. And right now, it's, uh, during the next semester, it's going to be uh, 500 students are going to go through this curriculum, and we're helping them to, to give them a chance to wonder and think about what they enjoy doing. Um, on the first day, we have a, we have the, first day, the first main event is called Spice Kickoff. And on this kickoff, we have them design these very inexpensive umbrellas made out of scrap materials. We call them the 10-cent umbrellas. 
and they're made out of random blast, like plastic bags and wood, bamboo. And then afterwards, they actually test them. They get a hose outside, they test them by spraying water on them to see whether or not they, they survive, or whether or not they get drenched. And it's very clear which ones survive and which ones do not. Actually, when we've done this before, most of them have success, are successful. So by giving this, this chance, I'm hoping, I'm hoping to help other people to, be, to have a chance to wonder, to think about what they enjoy doing. I enjoy inventing. Many other people will have other ways of, of wondering and expressing their own creativity. It could be poetry, or acting, or singing. My particular way is invention. Um, this is uh, another picture from the Spice kick Kickoff. You can see them uh, building stuff with tape and, and uh, pieces of wood. But my message to youth, and really to everyone, is to really think about what you enjoy doing. And think about, find, it's best to find something that you really care about, and then figure out a way to incorporate this to whatever you do. And also, I encourage you to limit your time on social networking um, uh, services, um, because they don't really encourage wondering, and they're also, uh, they, they, they're a lot of consuming. It, causes you, it encourages you to consume content rather than create it. Uh, thank you for your time, and it's been an honor to speak with you. Thank you.